Hey, everybody, it's Aftermath Online. How are you? I'm fine. I'm Nug filling in for Caroline this week, who is on double secret assignment uh, somewhere in the world where I'm not allowed to say. I don't think she's allowed to say. I don't think anyone knows. Uh, but we are doing our uh, wins for the week that was in WWE. And I'm gonna kick things off because I'm very excited that people get a chance to shut up. Uh, on Friday night, uh, Big E showed up and showed a mean streak. And for all those people that are like, I wish he was a little more serious. Well, you got your serious Big E so you can shut up. Also, I don't know if uh, a serious Big E is a good thing because he was kind of scary on Friday night. It was nice to see a serious side, but now I'm worried that the very serious Big E could cause a very serious problem on SmackDown. Uh, you know what? I, I agree with you that the very serious Big E can cause a very serious problem on SmackDown, but at the same time, Big E is still Big E, and that, that, that fun side of him will come out again in the right circumstance. So I, I like seeing different layers. I like seeing different, uh, you know, visions of people as opposed to being that Com comic relief guy always having fun you want to show a little bit of a mean streak especially when you're dealing with a guy like Seamus yeah yeah and when you're so fun and, and loving the the contrast of, of that mean streak really stands out even more I just hope he doesn't get a taste of that meanness and then you know kind of want to become like a bad guy so that's hopefully that it stays a good guy you know, when you get a taste of the dark side, you kind of want to stay on the dark side for a while. It, maybe it's life. a little too much. It's maybe he's going to have a lot of fun being that mean. You get it's the money, like you get the power. Yeah. yeah it's kind of like sugar. You get, you know, you get that taste a little bit, and then, then, then you get a taste of the, uh, the, the substitute. I oh, uh, stevia? Yeah, or whatever Slender. it's called, and you go, but it's not sugar. It doesn't taste the same. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Jimmy, your win. Yeah, my win. I'm going back to SmackDown as well. I'm enjoying Sami Zayn coming back and actually getting in the ring finally and, and physically seeing him have a match. Uh, I, I'm a fan of his despite the fact that he annoys me, but that's what he's supposed to do. I'm supposed to be annoyed by this guy, and he's a doing a perfect job of doing that. But his in-ring ability is – he hasn't lost a step, which is nice to see. And he's in there with someone like AJ Styles, which is uh, – if you're going to come back for your first match, there's a guy you want to come back for your first match with. And, and like I said, uh, we're getting lost in this world of, of in-between guys. Are they really bad guys? Are they really good guys? I don't know. Kind of, sort of. We know Sami Zayn is an annoying bad guy. And he's, uh, as much as I'm not liking him being annoying, again, like I said, he's supposed to annoy me. Yeah, I, I like when he, I like him as a bad guy. He's, he's really good at it. And um, there's a lot of truth in what he says. It's just, it was kind of like when Daniel Bryan was the, the evil environmental guy. There's a lot of truth in what he was saying as well. But then you have to always remember that he's a fantastic athlete. He doesn't look the part now. He looks a bit like Seth Rogen. He's not in the best shape in the world. But he can go, man. There's no, make no mistake about it. Yeah, there's no, uh, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of ring rust on Sammy after being away for as long as he was. Uh, also, when he left and was stripped of the Intercontinental Championship, there was part of me that was like, oh, I hope he just claims he was never beat and we sh he shows up. And uh, then we get this, uh, I'm the champion. No, I'm the real champion. And we have, like, it shades of Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, SummerSlam ladder match with two belts. I hope there are two Intercontinental titles above the ring for this ladder match as well. Nice. Yeah. Uh, Anthony, your win. My win is a little different this week. There's a lot of stuff that was going on. I watched Raw last night. Uh, but there was one little twist that made me go, huh. I was kind of getting bored of the Mysterio family presence in the ring. All of a sudden, Aaliyah gets involved and she runs off and she's like, I'm like, oh, I, I didn't see that coming. I knew Dominic was training and, you know, planning to come into the family business. I don't know if she's training or if she's going to be a character backstage, but she's a fantastic little uh, actress and entertainer. And like, she just, I was captivated yesterday. So let, let's see where that goes. You mess with someone's daughter, man. Just, that's like the ultimate opportunity for a baby face to like rip your arms off and beat you with them. So um, yeah, a little twist to a storyline that I wasn't paying attention to that now I'm interested in. It, it's very interesting, especially, you know, coming from that world and seeing her as this little girl growing up to be this this young woman now who, like you said, has been a little bit captivating and we're getting to see a little bit of a, a different side to her as well. We talk about like different layers to, to people and their characters. We're starting to see that from 
from, from Aliyah as supposed to just to being a supporting, for lack of a better term, you know, here's the main cast and then here's your supporting actors in the background right here. She's, she's actually coming to the forefront. Whether, like you said, Anthony, whether she actually participates in the ring in a match, who knows? Wait and see. But uh, yeah, so far, so good from her. Last week when she checked on Buddy Murphy, yeah. you know, or two weeks, whatever that was, two weeks ago or whatever it was, that was just a little taste of it, just a seed that was planted. And uh, my wife was watching and went, oh, and like she <laughs> saw it coming. And so this week, the payoff of, of her leaving perfectly playing the part of a 19-year-old, because she is, uh, when her dad said she was naive, she got pissed and left. And then the whole family's like, what? what and then they go follow her and she takes off again like i'm 19 i'm not a little girl anymore and then runs to the back and buddy comes up and apologizes now whether or not this apology is sincere i don't know if this is all part of a seth rollins plan that's something else but i while i'm not into a romance between a 19 year old and a 34 year old <laughs> or however old buddy is um i am into maybe buddy murphy growing a spine and leaving Seth, and if Aaliyah is the thing that makes that happen, I'm on board. And, and one real quick thing about that too. I like the little swerve, as we say, when they posted that picture up at the beginning saying, hey, I've got some information. You see everybody there, then you see Dominic. And you yeah. think that's where he's going with this, where the, you know, like the, the genes don't match up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and well, the, his, get... ge his genes are bigger. He's taller. He's got a different waist size. There you go. Uh, guys, those are our wins for the week that was in WWE. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Send all comments to Jimmy Corderas on Twitter. And don't forget to use the hashtag AskAftermath if you have any questions for us. For Jimmy, myself, and Anthony, thanks for watching and stay tuned because we've got fails coming up.